so I'd like to follow up Brian's talk. He briefly mentioned this, but um, I can go in depth of what uh, partially signed Bitcoin transactions is, what it gives us, and uh, kind of the uh, things people are working on to put it into practice. So there's history motivation, kind of background of why this is important, um, what these things are actually doing, like uh, Vault software is actually doing, and then going to the nitty gritty of PSPT itself. As well as an example, I'll do a live example, of doing it live, and then some resources. Um, so historically, these uh, partially signed transactions have had no standard format. Armory has its own format for a long time. Uh, Bitcoin Core has its own, just uses uh, network serialized un unsigned transactions, basically. Uh, these are incomplete, and all the APIs are completely different, and it ensures fragment, uh, fragmentation. Um, and there's, there's also all these weird corner cases, like for segregated witness, um, a, tra a transaction to a legacy node looks like a zero input transaction. This is a way to basically flag it as a segregated witness transaction. Um, but this sometimes gets the software, even SegWit wallet software, gets confused and then thinks it's a uh, legacy transaction with zero inputs or vice versa. Um, so there has to be a better way of uh, allowing zero input transactions when you're building a transaction, especially interactively with other parties, uh, making sure that goes smoothly and is not uh, getting confused. Um, this incongru incongruity also just increases the workload for developers to support various things such as hardware wallets or what I call external signers, just a wallet that doesn't have the keys local. Um, so a couple summers ago, uh, we had an intern at Blockstream, Andrew Chow, um, who's also a Bitcoin Core developer. Uh, he had an interest in finally solving this problem. He maintains, uh, he, he's a, he helps maintain Armory as well as work on Bitcoin Core. And um, over a couple years, he got some feedback on the format and it finalized his BIP 174. Um, and it's just been released in .17, uh, Bitcoin Core version .17. Um, it's all there. And Armory and um, various hardware wallets are also supporting it. So the CoinKite's cold, cold wallet, I believe it's cold card wallet, um, uses, basically just, sign, just takes a PSBT file, signs it, and hands it back to the user. So they use that natively. And there's other libraries that are... Um, now have support for it, such as Rust Bitcoin and others. Uh, so let's just take a look at what this solves. So in general, if you're a hard, uh, transaction signing program, I hand you a transaction and ask you to sign. Um, if you don't have any additional information, it's really hard to reason about um, what this transaction is, what it's doing, um, especially in low memory environments like uh, a hardware wallet, right? A hardware wallet has no sense of the UTXO set, um, values. Um, so it's, you know, one thing you tend to do, so and like in Bitcoin Core previously, and Ledger wallets and Trezor, you must, you had to feed either the previous transactions, so the previous output, the um, previous transactions for the inputs for the transaction, or at least the full output information for segregated witness inputs. Um, I'll explain a little more about that later, but this additional input information. And besides that, the previous transactions isn't, in, isn't not even enough. Um, for example, if you're doing, if you're signing a P2SH or pay to witness script hash, then the signer doesn't even necessarily know what the actual script is. It's a hash of a script, right? So it might not have any clue. Um, the signer may also want to reason about the outputs. So Brian mentioned logic like, uh, I'll sign anything that gives me more money, but how do you figure out what's your money, right? I could withhold information from you, uh, trick you in certain ways, thinking you're getting money when you're not, and this is one attempt to help uh, solve this. Um, also, you might need key path information. As far as I know, all hardware wallets, modern ones, um, they operate only using HD key paths. And you need to feed that to them. Um, and these, all these details come together kind of uh, as um, 
crucial for anything working remotely well. Um, you have to, each, each signer has a different piece of software, maybe a different piece of hardware, and currently there's just no good solutions. So the custody solutions today are kind of haphazard and only work with one or maybe two kind of uh, setups. So I'll go over a little bit over the fields that the partially signed Bitcoin transaction, PSBT, have. It's um, encoded in Base64 uh, when it's human readable or engineer readable, as they say. And um, the fields are key value maps. So they basically carry all the information necessary for the signer to reason about the transaction, uh, do all sorts of reasoning, solve it in the sense of how would I sign for it, and then sign for it and eventually um, finalize it. So put it all together and then make a valid transaction for the Bitcoin network. So there's a global types uh, type of field and currently there's only one, which is the unsigned transaction itself. Um, it's the transaction without any script sig values in it. So script sig is blank, the witness field is blank. There's no signatures or witness data of any sort. Uh, so th these are all just kept, uh, kept blank. And then there's per input types that start uh, at input, transaction input index zero, and move onwards. There's for um, non-witness EGXOs, you have to include the entire transaction because what you're doing is you're taking the entire transaction, getting the transaction ID, which is the hash of it, and then checking that it's actually the same, it matches with the previous, the um, inputs what's called prev out, it's the hash of the transaction, as well as the index of the output. So you wanna say, okay, this claims it's three Bitcoin, I wanna verify that's actually real, and this helps verify that. Uh, for a segregated witness UTXO, you can kind of work around a little bit and only give it the, the serialized output itself. So just part of the transaction. Um, and this is due to the fact that signature, signature hashes in segregated witness um, include value under the SIG hash. So if I claim it's three Bitcoin, then when I'm signing it or when, when the hardware wallet wants to sign, it says, well, this is, you know, this is three Bitcoin and verifiers will then check this. So if I lied to you and it's actually four, then the, it'll be an invalid transaction and that's okay. Uh, there's partial signatures, which is the key. The key is the public key and the value is the signature itself. So these will be stored up. So if it's a two of three multi-sig, up to let's say three signatures could be there, one, two, three, from each signer. It's not finalized yet. There's a sig hash type, which is kind of an advisory thing. You can say uh, the, the default is sig hash all, hash the entire transaction, sign that. You can also do other things like sig hash single, sig hash, anyone can pay, all these different flags, as other people have talked about already. The redeem script, which is to do with P2SH. It's the serialized, um, serialized script that is then recursively evaluated. There's the witness script, which is the last stack element in segregated witness transaction inputs. That is the script that you'll evaluate. Um, there's BIP32 derivation paths for each input, and in a multi it can be any number of them. Um, the key is the public key for the actual uh, key itself. And then the value is the master fingerprint, fingerprint and uh, an array of indexes that gets you there. So the master fingerprint is part of the extended public key that you, that you were uh, told about earlier. So it just lets you identify it without a, um, no cryptographic guarantees. It's kind of a weak, it's just a, uh, I think four byte fingerprint. Um, and then once, so this transaction is being passed around, being signed, getting partial signatures. Eventually at some point, you'll have enough signatures. Let's say two of three, you get two or three. And then a, a finalizer role is where the software says, aha, that's, you have enough. It, it can take all those script signatures, script sigs, and then make it finalized. Get rid of the partial signatures, stick it into the script sig. And same thing with script witness. Uh, and then there's also per output types. I talked about um, hardware wallets especially want to know things like change outputs because if you have a hardware wallet and you say, I wanna send two Bitcoin to this address, 
the transaction that's being shoved to the hardware wallet will actually have two outputs in general. One is going to this strange address you've never seen as a user, but that output is also um, given this HD path, HD key path, which then the wallet says, aha, that's right, that matches my, this output matches my key, I just won't show it to the user, because I, I know it's my, my Bitcoin. So you also, for, for each output, you have things like redeem script, witness script, and bit 32 derivation path, so you can calculate this per wall basis. Um, and then I'll just go through a list of, it's kind of a laundry list of RPC calls. I'll just unroll them here. So I would use a pointer, but I don't have a working pointer here. So there's the create step, which you can see with create PSBT, and a little bit down, wallet create funded PS, PBST, PSBT, bit of the mouthful. So the create PSBT takes, you know, it's sort of like the create raw transaction interface, except instead of making this kind of raw transaction serialized thing, it makes a, a uh, PSBT. The wallet create funded P PSBT is like fund raw transaction. It's the equivalent, basically. Um, it's the one I tend to use. And once it's created, you can process it. So wallet process P PSBT is something like where um, you hand it to another wallet, and if they know something about an input or an output, they can fill it out, and they can also optionally sign it and pass it on to the next person or the next machine. Um, and then eventually when you think it's all done, when all the personal signatures have become finalized uh, or are ready to be finalized, then you can call finalize PSBT. Um, and you can do the optional extract, which is give me back the final network serialized transaction, the thing you'd actually submit to the network. Um, and then decode PS PSBT is useful for just introspection. So with all these um, things, you can actually use them today. Uh, I, have an, I have a working demo with Bitcoin Core, a couple of open portal requests that allow you to import specific information so you can, the wallet is actually able to create these transactions. Hand it to a wallet interface, a hardware wallet interface where the hardware wallet signs as well and pass it back. And the resources, let's see if I can pull it up. Okay, so, oh my, is that normal? Well, enjoy. Um, so here I have, and I set this up because it's a bit of, it's a bit of, it's fairly manual setting this up because you use the hardware wallet to get these addresses, then you import them. Um, but this is a reg test, so I do not have 50 Bitcoin. Um, this is my ledger wallet. See, sorry, there's tons, I wish I could point. RPC wallet equals ledger wallet. So I'm asking my ledger wallet, what do you think you have? Well, you have 50 at this. I wish I had lapel or something. Okay, and then I say, give me information about it, ledger wallet. And my ledger wallet, uh, the the data inside this wallet.dat file, which, which is called the ledger wallet, it's uh, not the hardware wallet, it's the actual stored keys and everything on my computer. Um, it knows about the, very, the two pub keys. It's a, it's a two of two multi-sig. And it knows it owns one of them. Um, and it knows all the various information about it as well. Mm, yeah, it's, it's zoomed in. That's all. Not responding to it. Oh no. I just zoomed in more. It's not coming back. <laughs> okay, I'll try. This is kind of a bit, this is just a lot of information. Um, let's see, so I've got this. Uh, now I want to create a PSPT. That's a two of two multi sig. One is a wallet I called Core, Core wallet. I have core and ledger. So I'm just gonna create a funded transaction, wallet create funded PBS, PSBT. Um, it's gonna go to some address I just picked. I'm gonna send 45, lock time 101, use uh, watch only funds and add bit 32 derivation oh. paths. So it gives me this, this is in base 64 and as a fee and change output. Um, I can, one second. And 
and you can inspect it. So there's out this output thing, as I told you before. It's got all the, it has one, this is the ledger one. Ledger outputs, both of them. And then there's the input section, which knows things like it's a witness UTXO, it has a redeem script, and a witness script, and then various other information, including the raw transaction itself, which isn't too interesting. And then what I'll do is take that and I'll sign it. First, I plug this in. My ultra secret password, one, two, three, four. Very secure. So first I enumerate to, I want to get a hold of these devices. And so a ledger has one here. It has two interfaces. One's like the, uh, doesn't really matter. One's the, uh, the uh, keyboard interface, doesn't really matter. And then, whoops, lost a hold of that. Let's grab it again. All right, so I said sign this transaction. It's now telling me about an output of 45. It is not telling me about my change output because it, the core wallet handed it the HD pass and I just signed it. And here we go. Here's something slightly longer. Then we can take a look at the decoded. So now we should have partial signatures. One partial signature, the pub key signature itself, but it's not complete, hasn't been finalized. So what I want to do is wallet process this. Now it says complete true, which means it thinks it's done. And we can just take a look. So it should have. Yes, final script witness and final script sig. So it now believes it has everything it needs to be valid. But you notice there's yeah, two signatures here. And then finalize SPT. And it's complete. Now it's in hex as you know and love. Um, and this can be sent off to the network and you're done. So this is kind of a, a multi-sig using PSPT. Uh, end-to-end -end example. And that is all I have.